Shape matching plays an important role in many manipulation tasks, such as kit assembly. In fact, the shape of an object often matches the shape of the corresponding space in its placement location. And understanding this relationship is what allows us to seamlessly assemble objects in our everyday interactions. Unfortunately, this concept is often overlooked in many modern assembly systems, which typically rely on lots of prior knowledge like 3D models to estimate object poses. This hinders their adaptability to tasks with new objects they have never seen before. If robots could instead generally learn how things fit together, would it enable them to immediately generalize to new objects? In this paper, we present an approach to learning generalizable policies for robotic kit assembly through shape matching, which is entirely self-supervised. Here is a demonstration of our system in action. It learns to use visual and geometric cues to establish correspondences between objects and their target placement locations. Because what it learns is a general matching function, our system is capable of immediately generalizing to new unseen objects and tasks without any additional training data. We call our resulting real-world system form to fit and it learns effective pick-and-place strategies that achieve over 94% average assembly accuracy on novel kit configurations and 86% success on completely new objects and kits in just 12 hours of training. form to fit is based on two key ideas. One, it leverages visual geometric descriptors to establish correspondences between objects and their target placement locations. As it trains over a variety of objects across multiple kitting tasks, form to fit acquires a broader understanding of how shapes and surfaces fit together, subsequently learning more generalizable descriptors that are capable of matching new objects and target locations. Second, form to fit acquires this representation entirely through self-supervision. The key idea is that while inserting objects into tight spaces with the correct orientation is challenging to learn through trial and error, because the chances of success from random exploration can be slim, disassembling completed units is often much easier to learn since there are fewer incorrect ways to remove an object than there are to correctly insert it. form to fit leverages this difference to amass training data by randomly disassembling a fully assembled kit, then rewinding the sequence in reverse to learn how the kit should be put together. Using a calibrated 3D camera, our system captures grayscale depth images of the robot workspace and uses 3D point cloud information to produce two grayscale depth height maps, one for the kit and one for the objects. The object height map is fed to a suction module, which is a fully convolutional ResNet, to generate pixel-wise predictions of suction success. Here, the suction probability map is visualized as a heat map, where hotter pixels indicate better 3D locations to execute the suction primitive. Similarly, the kit height map is fed to a place module to produce pixel-wise predictions of placing success. The 3D locations of the pixels with higher confidence serve as better locations for the suction gripper to approach from a top-down angle to place the object. Now that form to fit has generated a set of picking and placing locations, it still needs two more pieces of information to carry out an assembly action. First, it needs a way of associating each suction location on the object to a corresponding placing location in the kit. And second, once it picks a pick-and-place candidate pair, it needs to infer the rotation angle it needs to apply to the selected object before placing it in the kit. This is where the matching module comes in. It consists in a two-stream fully convolutional neural network whose goal is to map each pixel in the kit and object height map to a d-dimensional descriptor space where closer embedding distances indicate better object placement correspondences. To do this, the matching module first ingests the object height map and produces a dense object descriptor map. Then it takes the kit height map and rotates it 20 times to account for 20 different rotations, embedding each rotated height map into the same descriptor space. In this way, the matching network is encouraged to learn rotation-sensitive descriptors, where each pixel in the kit height map maps to 20 kit descriptors, one for each rotation, but only one of them, the ground truth rotation, should match to its corresponding object descriptor. Finally, the planner is responsible for integrating information from all three modules and producing the final assembly parameters. Specifically, top pick candidates are sampled from the suction heat map and top place candidates are sampled across all 20 rotations of the place heat map. Then, for each pick and place pair in the product of candidates, kit and object descriptors are indexed and their L2 distance is evaluated, after which the pair with the lowest L2 distance across all rotations and all candidates is chosen to produce the final kit descriptor, object descriptor, and rotation index. To generate the inputs and ground truth labels needed to train our various networks, we create a self-resetting closed-loop system wherein the robot continuously disassembles the kit, then performs it in reverse to reset the system to its initial state. 
To do so, the suction network first predicts a suction location inside the kit, which is executed by the suction primitive to grasp the object. If the grasp is successful, the robot randomly places and orients the object on the work surface. Otherwise, it tries the next best suction location. The suction network is trained through trial and error, and the kit is taped to the table to ease the learning and prevent accidental displacements. By storing all the parameters and images generated during the disassembly process, we can generate the ground truth labels for every module. For the placing network, we use the suction location P and the height map taken after the suction action as a training pair. The training data for the suction network consists of two sets of input label pairs, the kit height map and the suction position P, and the object height map and the place position Q. Finally, to label the correspondences for the matching network, we first compute the mass of the object both inside and outside the kit using the images difference, and use the change in end effector rotation to associate every pixel in the cavity of the kit to its corresponding pixel on the object. One of the first questions we aimed to answer was whether form to fit would remain accurate and robust across a wide range of rotations and translation of the objects in the kit. To test this, we collected data for various kits in a fixed position and orientation to train a form to fit policy. However, during testing, we expose it to randomly sampled positions and orientations of the kit. We find that our learned policy is able to achieve over 90% assembly accuracy on new and challenging poses as shown here. Next, we study how well our system can generalize to different kit configurations. Specifically, we select the tape and floss kits and train a model on the same single kit dataset. We perform 20 trials of combinations and mixtures of these kits, never seen during training, and find that our system achieves an assembly success rate that exceeds 94%. Finally, we study how well our system can generalize to novel objects and kits. Here, we show that while our system has never before seen the following single and multi-object kits, it is able to successfully assemble them with a rate exceeding 86%. We even find that a trained policy can assemble novel zoo animals that have been held out from the train set. To explore what the object descriptors generated by the matching network have learned to encode, we compute and visualize the TSNI embedding of the learned feature descriptors for different kits. Specifically, we reduce the 64-dimensional descriptor vectors to three dimensions for color space visualizations. We observe three things. First, that the descriptors have learned to encode rotation, since the same objects oriented the same way have identical descriptors, and those with different orientations have different descriptors. Second, that they have learned spatial correspondence, since same points on the same oriented objects share similar descriptors. And finally, that they have learned to encode object identity with different zoo animals and fruits exhibiting different colors. Generally, we observe that frequent modes of failure come from the robot placing objects 180 degrees flipped. This typically occurs with objects that look similar when flipped. While form to fit presents a step towards generalizable kit assembly, it does have a few limitations. First, we note that most of our experiments are done on a tabletop setting where the robot is restricted to planar two-dimensional manipulations. It would be interesting to explore a more complex action representation to enable three-dimensional sixth-off assembly. Second, while our system is able to handle partially transparent kits, it has trouble handling fully transparent ones like the deodorant blister pack, which is why we spray painted it. Exploring the use of depth prediction networks to estimate the geometry of the transparent kits before using the visual data would be a promising direction for future research. Third, learning assembly from disassembly with self-supervised time reversal works well for many of our partially static experiments, but it may not be suited for all assembly tasks, especially when there are more complex dynamics that are not easily reversible. In these harder settings, it would be interesting to discover ways to continue benefiting from time reversed data. For more details, please check out our technical report at the following URL. Thank you for watching.